we turn to the phone lines right now and chat with my buddy from the NFL Media Group, Albert Breer. How are you, Albert? No, I'm great. You, Rich? I'm doing fine. I, I was going to start Peyton with you, but I want to go right to uh, some of the uh, hottest stories right now. Certainly the one involving Brandon Marshall and the Bears potentially trying to trade him before the new, new league year begins. What can you tell me about that, Albert? Well, this is part of John Fox's, um, you know, his effort to, to rework the culture there. And, and that's exactly why he, he was brought into Denver four years ago. Um, they're looking for him to do the same thing um, in Chicago, and, and, and this would be the first step of the process, and trying to find a way to change the dynamics in the locker room. I do think that they're going to go forward with Jay Cutler. That coaching staff is a Cutler-friendly coaching staff. Both the offensive coordinator and the quarterback's coach have existing relationships with Cutler. But clearly they feel like something needs to be shaken up here. And maybe the most movable guy that they have as far as that goes is Brandon Marshall. So do you think it will happen? I think there's a good chance of it, yeah. I mean, I think that if, if they can find a team that's willing to give up a mid-round pick, you know, I, I think they would pull the trigger on it. Here's the other thing you have to remember there, too. They're going to have to take care of Alshon Jeffrey. He's more part of their long-term future. So now you're looking at the roster and you're saying, okay, how much money do we want to allot to that position? If you got a young star like Alshon Jeffrey going into a contract here, that's something that you've got to budget forward for, too. So it works from that standpoint as well. Albert Breer of the NFL Media Group, NFL Network, joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Always go to NFL.com to read on uh, Albert's latest musings as well. So in my mind, Peyton Manning, uh, as shrewd as, as they come, would – at some point say, I give this money back or give money that you then turn into incentives that I can earn by winning it all. What will you, he's the type of guy that would say, well, what will you do with it? Will you get my tight right. end back? Would, what would you do with it? Did, did that happen from, from all that you know, Albert? I, I, my understanding is this doesn't really change anything as far as the Broncos' plans go. And, and I said this to you before, this is really John Elway's show. Um, I can take you back to conversations I had with him in October and November. And when I brought up the concept of being all into him, I mean, he almost got offended by that. You know, it was, he said, it's not win now, it's win from now on. So you know, they want to retain their core and keep a group in place that's not just going to be equipped to win in 2015, but going forward. But I think after spending all that money on Emmanuel Sanders and Demarcus Ware and the Keep Tlaib and TJ Ward last year, now they're going to be looking internally, and, and that means, you know, at least looking at the idea of trying to retain Julius Thomas if the numbers don't get crazy, taking care of a couple of their offensive linemen, which will make Peyton Manning happy. And then the big one that's going – big one for them going forward is finding a way to extend Von Miller. So there are a number of internal pieces of business that I think they want to take care of to ensure their future beyond 2015. So I think when you're looking at what they're going to do this offseason – more internal than external. So, Julius Thomas, you said if the numbers don't get crazy. And they could get crazy. <laughs> okay. And they could get crazy. I mean, it's, look, I mean, you see it with the Super Bowl champions, right? I mean, the, the difference that those types of, of tight ends can make, you know, the, the, the kind of guy who can, um, you know, just affect the defense up the middle the way that Julius Thomas can when he's healthy – um, there are going to be teams out there that are going to be looking to give their quarterback that security blanket. And, and two that really stick out are the two teams with the most money to spend, Jacksonville and Oakland. If you've got Derek Carr or Blake Bortles, a quarterback, young guy there, what better security blanket can you give them than, than that big target over the middle to go to when they're in trouble? Um, you know, I think there's going to be a serious market for Julius Thomas. We don't see tight ends of this caliber get out on the market much. Um, so I think there will be at least a few teams chasing him, and it's going to make it difficult for the Broncos to hold on to him. Well, you, you brought up the defending Super Bowl champs, Vince Wilfork tweeting that he's done with the Patriots. What, what, what next do you think happens for the heavy Chevy, Albert? Well, every, uh, for, for Vince, I think it's, uh, Vince is going to have a market. I mean, look, you've got Bill O'Brien um, you know, in, in, in Houston with Romeo Cornell at the D.C. there. You've got Dean Pease, who was D.C. In, in, in New England for a few years. In Baltimore, you've got Eric Mangini in San Francisco. And one thing I've learned in 10 years covering the league, guys that size who can move the way Vince can, even if he's not what he was five years ago, will consistently have a market. So he'll have work somewhere. Um, I think the question is going to be, as it is with most older free agents, what, what, what's his priority? Does he need to go to a place where he's going to win right away? That could wind up affecting him financially. Maybe that drives him back to New England, you know, because I think the door is still open there. Um, I know he still wants to play, and I think because so many of those coaches out there who have connections to him 
are, are in, in positions of power, defensive coordinators, head coaches. I think there's going to be plenty of uh, plenty of opportunity out there for him. Albert Breer of the NFL Media Group joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's talk running backs. What what came uh, first blush out of the Adrian Peterson conversation? He called it a great, uh, I guess, meeting yeah. in a way between he and the brass of the Vikings yesterday in his house. I, I, every everything that you know. Look, this goes back to September. Okay, Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman and everybody on the football side of that building has made every effort the last five months to try and make Adrian Peterson know you're wanted here. We, we, we view you as part of this team. We want you helping Teddy Bridgewater grow up as a quarterback. When all the smoke clears on this, you've got a place here. The problem isn't between Adrian Peterson and the football people. The problem is above that. And that's between Adrian Peterson and Kevin Warren. Warren worked with the league on um, getting Peterson put on the exempt list. And um, as you know, as fate would have it, Kevin Warren was promoted by the Vikings three weeks ago. Um, so that's the relationship that really needs to be repaired. I don't think that the Spielman, Zimmer, Peterson dynamic really needed to be fixed. Um, it was good that they went down there, but really the one that needs to be taken care of is the relationship between Peterson and Kevin Warren. And, of course, ownership can affect all of that as well. How so? By, by guaranteeing money that's not guaranteed yeah. this contract? Yeah. Right? To come down I mean, to money? You know, you give him the brass ring, you know, set him up to uh, retire as a Viking. I mean, here's the other part of it. I don't know how many teams out there, as great as he is, he's due $13 million. I don't know how many other teams out there are going to be willing to pay him $13 million bucks just based on the way that position has been devalued over the last few years. And so – um, you know, I think there's a the fi- there's a financial incentive for for Adrian Peterson to go back to Minnesota. I, again, I think he can work with the football people there. It's that one relationship there between him and Kevin Warren that I think is going to dictate where this goes. Demarco Murray hanging with some of his Cowboy teammates at a Duke game last night, um, giving some hope, I guess, to Cowboys fans that yeah. that he wants to remain a Cowboy. He loves his teammates. He loves them as friends. Uh, what can you tell us about the leading rusher of the National Football League and uh, what appears to be an open market for him? Yeah, the Cowboys want him back just at their price. And, you know, well, I, what I is their the, price? What do you think that it, price I mean, is? It, I mean, it was, it was in the 4 to $5 million a year range <laughs> earlier in the year. Um, you know, I think at this point they're, you know, they're, they're okay with letting him hit the market and seeing um, you know, what, what comes of that. I, this is a tough spot for DeMarco Murray to be in for, for a number of different reasons. A, he's got injury history. B is coming off of a 400 carry season and C the draft class is deep and talented. And you've got seven or eight guys who could be day one starters in the NFL that you could have in the first three rounds of the draft. But so Albert, don't all you of think those things press push down the value of a big time running back? And we saw what happened last year. I mean, no running backs got paid last year. In fact, the last time any running backs have really gotten big time contracts, It was all in that one season in 2012 when you had Foster and Rice and Forte Mm -hmm. and all those guys getting deals. Since then, I mean, you've seen almost no big running back. But don't you think, Albert, though, with all the cap dollars that's on the market and virtually every team that has the most to spend needing a running back, that there's going to be at least somebody out there that will average him out at eight figures, certainly in terms of a guarantee that's going to be – somewhere north of 25, right? I mean, don't you think there's somebody out there that's just going to well, do that? Well, here's the, pro- the problem. I, again, you know, I think coming off the 400 carry season, his injury history, all that, that hurts him. Um, there are teams, I mean, there are teams that are going to have to spend here, though. Tate Jacksonville and Oakland, two teams I mentioned, okay? They, they got to get up over that minimum spend. On top of that, to do that, they don't have guys on their own rosters that, that they can pay. I mean, they drafted so poorly in 2010 and 2011. There's no one there for them internally to pay. So they've got to go outside the organization to take care of it. Teams like that could maybe justify the idea of paying a running back on the same premise that I gave you on Julius Thomas, which is we've got a young quarterback and a Derek Carr or a Blake Bortles. What do we do to make him more comfortable? Well, let's give him a running game. And so in those types of cases where you've got to spend the money, maybe one of those teams goes crazy, but it, it's, it's just difficult, Rich, right now to see the running back market bouncing back after what we've seen the last couple of years, especially for a player who, as great as he was in 2014, has all those conditions working against him. Before I let you go, Albert, my 60 seconds I have left, reading the tea leaves as you are, when the new league year window opens up next Tuesday, the team that will be the most active in free agency is who? 
The Oakland Raiders. Um, the Oakland Raiders because they have to be. Uh, and, and I think the Jacksonville Jaguars will be right there with them. Um, and then the Miami Dolphins will be the one that I would kind of keep an eye on, too. They've cleared some of their mid-level contracts. You know, Brian Hartline, Brandon Gibson. Um, I think that they are going to be a player for Indomitian soon. Now, I don't think that they're going to have – it's not going to be five guys signing there the way Jacksonville and the Raiders might, but the Dolphins might be the team that surprises you. I've heard that ownership is fully supportive of making a real run at Indomitian Sioux and looking at him as a guy who's changed the dynamic of what they are defensively. And then the other one to watch, if Revis gets to the market, will be the New York Jets, who I think would make a serious run at, 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 at their old cornerback and I think would off, put something together that offers a lot financially and gives him some things that are interesting beyond football. Albert, you take care. We'll chat with you next week. You got it, Rich. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.